Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Galapagos Day. It's great to see so many people here today, and I think we're going to have a very good evening. I want to hand over now to Tony Darton, our Chief Executive, to take it on from here. Tony. Thank you, Richard, and a warm welcome to everyone from me as well. The stage is set for this evening's anniversary special discussion about the real star of the show, Galapagos. I know we're in for a treat, and I'm sure you'll agree that our three speakers need no further introduction from me or from anyone. So, Andrew, over to you. Tony, thank you very much indeed. Um, <clears throat> The, no the notion is that we'll speak, you know, we'll talk together uh, for half an hour or whatever it is, 35 minutes, and then, very, very importantly, um, it'll be your questions and, and your contributions. Uh, we don't want to make this simply three people sitting on stage talking to each other. Can I just add uh, my voice um, from the Galapagos Conservation Trust? Warm, warm welcome to everyone this evening. Um, there, are, there are many places to start. Could I ask Sir David? How important is it that there are areas like the Galapagos where real protective measures can be taken, where we can, we can hold back change? Well, uh, the Galapagos, it seems to me, um, has some great advantages uh, because it is isolated. They are isolated islands. You have, to, if, you, if you don't live there, you have to go to a lot of trouble to get there. Uh, so you are... The islands are cut off from the main um, thrust of, of, of humanity. And it's possible to control visitors, which is the huge advantage that they have. The fact that you can produce islands and get islands there that have actually no people on. There are some with no people on, uh, and, or no permanent residents, at any rate. And so you can see what the world was like in one small corner of it, at any rate, without humanity. And that's a rare thing. Felipe, if you are conserving or restoring a building, say, then you have an idea in your head of what you want to restore it to. What I wonder is, how do you work out what you want to restore for instance, Floriana, too, because you have got a human population Very there. Very simple. Yeah. We want to restore Floriana to what Darwin saw. To, right, to the island that he <laughs> as saw. As simple as that. Yeah. No. We want to go back there, and we believe it, it is possible to go there. Perhaps... You the, can reverse engineer some of the sort of changes that have No, we are since. lucky that, for example, the, Galapagos, uh, the Floriana mockingbirds still survive in these mm. small satellite islands, so we could bring them back to the main island of Floriana. We have the Galapagos razor snakes that we also could bring back. We have the Galapagos hawks. We have the tortoises that now the geneticians are finding out that there are the traces of the genetic uh, Floriana tortoises on Isabella. Nevertheless, we could do a tax of replacement, yeah. and we could set up tortoises that will play the role of the herbivores, and therefore we could have the same species on Floriana as when Darwin visited yeah, that island. Exciting. And exciting. that yeah. is our goal, that is our aim, and that we think it is possible. What we have to remember is that the Galapagos Islands are recent islands, uh, and they effectively are barren. They are sterile islands. They are volcanic slag that's come out from the bottom of the earth, infertile and barren as you can find anywhere on the earth. So that everything that comes on that island has actually come from the sea. So that the, the birds, they live, from, well, many of the, of the seabirds, of course, fish. And if something goes wrong with the, with the sea, you won't get the albatross and you won't get uh, the cormorants and you won't get uh, the penguins and you won't get many of the other, not the insectivorous birds, but the, many of the seabirds do. Okay, that's one lot. But what about uh, the tortoises? What do they live on? Well, they live on plants for the most part. Uh, and how do the plants live? They can only live because there's, there is guano. And where does the guano come from? It comes from seabirds, which comes from the sea. 
So the so the sea, it's it's an ecological um, object lesson. Um, everything comes from the ocean. If something goes wrong with the ocean, then that island could face catastrophe. We have this treasure, world treasure, the Galapagos Islands. As I say, the best preserved archipelago in the world. 95% plus of the biodiversity, original biodiversity, is still remains present. If uh, we work together, as we have been working together in the last few years and decades, if we continue in this road, we could have Galapagos as a model for what that elusive concept of sustainability will be. And if we cannot save Galapagos, then we definitely don't have any hopes. And that's not ending in a no, but it, it reminds negative me, it way, reminds but people, in a realistic way. <laughs> and it reminds people why so many of us here in the room are members of the Galapagos Absolutely. Conservation Trust. So thank you very much indeed for thank that. Thank you, too.